Hello, podcast listeners. You are now listening to the Coffee, Health, and Science podcast. I'm your host, Jordan River, and I want to thank you for tuning in today. Before we get started, make sure to share the Coffee, Health, and Science podcast. Spread the show. We do appreciate it, everybody. Make sure you're subscribed. Give us a good rating and review. It helps grow the show more than you might think. Today, Dr. Coffee's back on the line. Show favorite, my good friend, coffee expert, and more. What's up, my friend? Hey, it's another day above ground living the dream. How are you, my friend? I'm doing excellent. I'm drinking on some purity coffee. I am sitting in front of a sunny window. We got some sun today, so I could not I could not be happier, to be honest. I heard that you're coming at us today with a surprise topic, so I'm a, I'm a little on edge here. What do you have for us today, Dr. Coffee? So I wrote something really interesting, and uh, and I wanted to read it because I got some very, very confusing feedback after I wrote it. So bear with me. Here's, ah. here's what I wrote. Sure. Whole bean coffee. Recent studies have shown that high-quality whole bean coffee might be the world's richest superfood because of its antioxidants. Uh uh Coffee can have more antioxidants than most foods. These antioxidants help fight damage in our cells by unstable molecules, which are free radicals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Free radicals cause inflammation within the body that is linked to a host of diseases and medical conditions. Whole bean coffee that is ground right before brewing is the healthiest as opposed to ground or instant coffee. Regular coffee consumption has been shown to have multiple health benefits, Mm -hmm. including enhancing brain function, reducing the risk of Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and dementia, fighting cancer, protecting the heart and cardiovascular system, helping to fight depression and enhancing mood, reducing the risk of type 2 diabetes, protecting the liver, promoting weight loss, reducing the risk of retinal damage, and reducing the risk of MS, suppressing pain, extending human life, improving sports performance, and increasing energy. Wow, pretty comprehensive there. So So that was a paragraph that I wrote. uh Uh-huh. And then the doctors came back with a lot of questions. It was amazing to me that not only did lay people come back with a certain bent of questions, but doctors came back with the same bent of questions, and it floored me. Well, I got to get into these. At first, I thought it was going to be like one of your one of your Dr. Coffee tricks where because you said whole bean coffee, you got questions like, do you just eat the whole beans or something? <laughs> now I'm thinking that it's more medically oriented. So yeah. No, <laughs> no but wait, wait. You, you, I, I did mean to tell you this at the very beginning. I'm in hot water with my wife. Oh God. Yeah. Because I've been staining all the sinks in the house. Yeah. Since I started using coffee as a mouthwash, she just uh, <laughs> doesn't like it. It stains the inside of the sink. So I've got it. I've got to change to a Starbucks blonde instead of a purity espresso roast. Do- Dr. Coffee's in some hot water there. Got to fix it with the wife. Man. <laughs> you kill me, man. You kill me. But in all seriousness, I do get a ton of antioxidant questions as well, surrounding inflammation, surrounding free radicals, just like you said. Um, so I'd love to do a little, a little antioxidant deep dive today. I would love to too, because it really, really did throw me for a loop as to the questions that doctors were posing to me about what is an antioxidant. And I realized that most people really don't understand it. Right. So what do you think an antioxidant is? Well, I think it's a a classification of compounds, right? It's not one thing. There are many different types of antioxidants. And it's a classification of compounds that fight slash reverse the anti I'm sorry the oxidation process good close good. enough that's a, <laughs> that, that's that's close enough yes i'll take it <laughs> so antioxidants are produced by the body or may come in through our diet okay and they work to neutralize these harmful elements that are known as free radicals mm-hmm. so what happens is that we take oxygen. I'm giving just a simple example. Mm-hmm. And we, go, we throw it into a process where O2 gets cleaved in half. 
and becomes two O molecules mm-hmm. that are no longer stable because they're not together. It's kind of like a husband and wife. Okay. And if you take the husband and wife and separate them and you throw the husband in Las Vegas with a, with a, a car deal, he can get all the drinks he wants, then that becomes a free radical. All right. <laughs> okay. So these free radicals in the body occur because of some kind error of metabolism where we're breaking down or where we're building up and something gets left over. We can also get these free radicals from stress of the environment, the pollution. Shoot, if I was in Washington State or Oregon right now, you know, my, I'd have free radicals all over my lungs. Right, right? from all that smoke. So, so it's yeah. environmental, but I'm glad you said this. Um, an upcoming episode on this podcast, metabolism also has a lot to do with this. Um, eating too much, eating the wrong types of food, you wind up with lots of these basically just garbage in your cells and throughout your body, uh, uh, folded proteins and all this weird nonsense. So that's very enlightening. So for example, if your immune system is weak or, or, or let's say you're laying out at the beach and the UV rays are hitting your skin and they're, they're starting to cook the skin, which is the browning leads to tanning, but that produces free radicals. And if you're drinking a beer during that time, unless it's a coffee stat, of course, (laughs) um, if you're drinking a beer during that time, the alcohol will hamper the body from effectively fighting these free radicals. Wow. Wow. So these excessive free radicals in the body cause this damage to the structure and function of organs in the body, and they lead to disease. Right. The best example I can give you is somebody that needs radiation to cure a cancer cell, but the radiation causes a lot more problems around the tissues rather than just at the cancer cell. Right. You're, you're blasting all the, more than the, just the target. And all that is free radical damage. Oh, wow. Interesting. Interesting. Wow. So that, that's uh, that's pretty eye-opening and enlightening. And if antioxidants can, as you said, neutralize these free radicals, that makes a lot of sense as to why coffee might reduce so many different diseases. Like you've said, uh, cancers are not the same disease. How can it prevent all of these different cancers? Is that a link back to the antioxidant and free radicals? Is that a big part of that? It is. But that's where the confusion came with the doctors who were writing me and their questions were really interesting because what they were pointing out is that there are studies out there. So there there are many sources of antioxidants in foods, right? like vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin A and beta carotene, vitamin Mm -hmm. D, vitamin K, selenium, all those things are antioxidants Mm -hmm. and we get them in our food. So the doctors want to know why are there studies that show that the antioxidants actually can cause disease? Hmm. Interesting. And did you take a look at the references they sent you and such? Well, they didn't send me references, but I knew the, I I know the references. I know all the ones, (laughs) um, that they're talking about. Oh, please enlighten So us. here's the difference. We know that there's something called food as medicine. Mm-hmm. There's a difference between using vitamin E as a drug-like uh, effect versus getting it from your foods. Oh, wow. So there has, and I can see, I can talk about a lot, a lot, a lot of the the studies out there. I'm not going to do that because I just want your audience or our audience to understand basically what I'm saying. So vitamin E, we know that when you give large doses of vitamin E to women, there was no effect on changes in 
heart disease hmm. or very little effect. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we also know that large doses of beta carotene have been shown not to prevent lung cancer, but actually may increase the risk of lung cancer. Hmm. So they took 35,000 men, for example, and they gave them selenium and vitamin E supplements. And in a 2011 trial, they showed that it did not help prostate cancer at all. Okay. However, if you take it as food grade and food quantity, mm -hmm. then it's beneficial. So higher doses of certain antioxidants can actually cause an increase Whoa. in free radical formation. But it's not the natural delivery system. This is the same thing. We go into regenerative agriculture here, and this is the same thing with overfeeding your plants. Um, you can you can have a toxicity of a vital nutrient. It's about delivering it in a natural system, and there's so much synergy that goes into that that we just don't understand, frankly, I believe. And that's part right. I agree with you completely, but let me give you the other part of it. Oh, please. So, for example, th th there's a lock and key mechanism um, for a lot of these things. Ah, for sure. So the lock and key mechanism means that there are certain forms the key needs to take in order for it to turn the lock. Totally. So I know of at least eight chemical forms of vitamin E present in foods. Mm -hmm. And vitamin E supplements, on the other hand, typically include maybe one of those forms, alpha tocopherol. Right. There are some others that, you know, they make a they make a big deal about they've produced something with three different ones. But when we put a high dose of alpha tocopherol into a person's system, that may cause more problems than it may help. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. This is exactly what Dr. Sanjeev Chopra was saying too, basically that a lot of these supplements don't have the efficaciousness of their actual natural sources. Kind of, so is, are you saying that it's kind of the entourage effect or that it's more about the type of the vitamin? Well, or both. Let me give let me give you my list. I can't answer your question because um, I haven't given you my list. So okay. let me give you my list. So first of all, the beneficial health effects of uh, diets high in fruits and vegetables or other antioxidant rich foods may be caused by other substances present in the same food. Right. Right. So we know from coffee, for example, that there are good and that there are not good antioxidants, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's a chemical, Jordan, that uh, is bad in coffee? Oh, I don't know. You're, 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 you're putting me on the spot here. I know so many good ones. A bad chemical? How about if we, like a yeah, mycotoxin? Uh, yeah. Or, okay. or how about if we over roast it? What gets produced? Oh, of course. Yeah. Like a poly aromatic, uh, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon type thing. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Acrylamide. Okay. It's coming to me. I don't know why I, yeah. I, I blanked there. I think that's okay. I'll let you blank a little bit, <laughs> but like acrylamide. Okay. So we know that if, if the bean is not roasted right, we're going to have both a bad chemical and we're going to have the antioxidant. Right. Well, Depending on their balance, they may neutral each other out, or the bad may actually cause more problems than the good. Right, especially if, like you said, you're taking all these wrong, wrong steps at the production process. That's a good point. Yeah. The second one on my list is that the effects of large dosages of antioxidants used in supplementation may be different than the smaller amounts found in food. Sure. Yeah. The example I'll, I'll give is beta carotene, which if you eat dark green leafy vegetables, you get good beta carotene. If you consume large dosages of a pill of beta carotene, then there's been a number of studies that show it may increase lung cancer. It's so crazy. Yeah. And, and again, I can't get away from the less is more mentality. It's the exact same thing in natural farming. Right. I already mentioned the chemical makeup so that there's eight different kinds of vitamin E I know. The f next thing on my list is that some diseases, specific antioxidants might be more effective than ones 
that have been tested. Oh, interesting. So it does depend on... I was going to say that because if there's all these different antioxidant compounds, surely they have other effects too. So I don't know. So in the eye, for example, we know that there is an antioxidant called lutein. Mm -hmm. And you see Bosch and Loam, they have uh, a pill for eyesight that has lutein in it. Oh, yeah? But lutein may not be beneficial for the lungs. Right. So um, th that's the next uh, problem. Interesting. Then the, the next one is the relationship between health and free radicals is much more complex than most people understand. Mm. It's, I'm going to go back to the microbiome, mm -hmm. which we've discussed before. Yes. The microbiome is, has so many things going on that unt 10 years ago, we really didn't understand it at all. <laughs> right. And now we've got our toe in the water and that's it. We understand how little we know, basically. Exactly. So free radicals, that are beneficial, some of them actually may be harmful, and some of them are so beneficial that removing them may be harmful. <laughs> okay, that's a, actually so, a little bit frightening, but okay. <laughs> well, that's the problem with only relying on pills and not healthy eating. You know, the, the notion that where there's a pill, there's a way, Yeah. that doesn't hang if you don't have a good baseline of your diet. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding, man. That's exactly right. Then the other thing is, is that some antioxidants have to be around all the time for long periods of time for them to work properly. Oh. So somebody that just takes a month of an antioxidant pill, like vitamin C, let's say, um, may not get the benefit of eating a vitamin C, let's say orange every single day of their life. Right. 365. Yeah. That makes sense too. Yeah. And then last but not least, the science is really fuzzy only because the clinical trials that are done, if you read them, they're either a general population or some people who are really at high risk for a particular disease. Mm. And we really don't understand the increase in oxidative stress or the redox reaction where antioxidants will fit into that particular disease. Yeah, that's a good point. And how could you ever have a proper control, right? Like have some sort of placebo person's life where they eat vegetables that are secretly like not rich in antioxidants. Like there's no real control to this. So I don't know how you could ever properly study it. I'm going to stop you at the word ever because some studies are really uh, produced correctly and a lot of them aren't. So ever doesn't cut it, but many of the times does. Sure. I guess what I'm saying is you could never have a true placebo control. So I think that some people are going to be like, well, there's always going to be a little bit of like, I don't know, maybe pushback there. But for people like you and me, it's like th this, I don't need a study to tell me that organic food that's grown in a natural manner is more healthy. I don't need a study yeah. to tell me that, that, that vitamins and minerals from a vegetable is better than from a pill. This is, I, I think that it's kind of a little bit shameful that sometimes we need some papers to tell us these types of things. Right. So the last thing uh, on this one topic, before you ask me your question, the last thing I want to say is that the other thing that surprised me about doctors is they confuse oxidation with inflammation. Sure. Okay. Yeah. If you could extrapolate on the differences there and maybe the link between. Yeah. So some oxidation or, or many oxidation reactions in the body can lead to inflammation, uh -huh. but not every inflammation is caused by oxidation. Okay. And we know that one of the root bases of all diseases is infl inflammation. Right. So sometimes we give an antioxidant thinking it's going to help an underlying inflammation, and it doesn't. Ah, uh, I see. I see. But the free radicals and the antioxidants do play into the anti-inflammation process. Yeah, you hit somebody with a baseball bat, they're going to get an inflammation. Right. <laughs> but that's not the free radicals. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow, man. Let me do a little golf clap. I thought that was very comprehensive. 
Um, and it's a little bit, um, I guess I'm kind of surprised too, that it's such a, such a hard thing for doctors to kind of wrap their minds around, but this needs to be taught. You know, I don't think it's being put out there, you know, kind of front and center as much as it should be. So, so I wanted to ask you about antioxidants, but specifically from a non-coffee source, someone wrote in a really great question. I think it was directed at you, Dr. Coffee for the Ask Dr. Coffee segment, but they, they wrote in, um, if for some reason you were banned from coffee and you were no longer allowed to have coffee for the rest of your life, uh, I know I know that would be it for you. Probably jump out the window. But um, he, he, this guy wanted to know where would you get your antioxidants if you couldn't get it from coffee. He was basically asking about food sources, alternative sources of antioxidants. You mean other than the pine box they put me in? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You know, like barrel aged. <laughs> yeah, I can't have coffee, so just put me in the pine box yeah, and I'll barrel right I knew that myself. was. I knew that's where this was going. <laughs> you know, I have a chapter in my healthy eating book that we wrote um, on top superfoods, and I think whether you whether I'd be able to drink coffee or not, I think concentrating on making your diet. 70% top superfoods, mm. which includes coffee, is the way to go. Love that. Now, on that list, do you put up the uh, the regular staples? Is blueberries up there? What are your What are some of your superfoods? Um, well, basil is. Oh, I got some beautiful organic basil in my backyard right now. Uh, beans. There was a really interesting study on longevity and bean eating. Oh. And the people who lived the longest ate the most beans. Oh, God. I love that. Okay, I'm down. Extra beans. Yeah, I okay. think it has to do with the soluble and insoluble fiber that's in beans that that make it really healthy. But it's also real high in vitamin D and folate, folate and potassium, mm-hmm. low in sodium. So it's a, it's a great superfood. Uh, berries of all kind. You mentioned blueberries, but raspberries, blueberries, strawberries, blackberries. Right. I I don't know much about acai and goji because I've never been able to figure whether they are really good or they're only good because multi-level marketing companies have tried to pump them. They have a good marketer. They might just have a good uh, promo person, you know, a a good publicist. The the acai berry or the uh, goji berry publicist is definitely hitting it out of the park. Um, Should we tease? I mean, you're, you're working on a really cool project. Uh, for physicians, I mean, should we tease this now, Doctor Steve? Because you're talking about the healthy eating book. I don't know. Well, we we certainly could. Um, I'll tell a couple of my others. Uh, broccoli is a phenomenal. One uh, we've been talking with a group out of India that has a broccoli extract that has been shown to be great for uh, cancer prevention. Oh, broccoli extract! Why has no one done that before? That's genius. Yeah. Uh, cinnamon is a good one. Chocolate is a good one. But chocolate is like everything we're talking about. I, I talked to a woman and she said, was listening to the podcast and I've been eating a Hershey bar every day. And <laughs> it's not the same. I'm like, uh, I'm like, well, that's not, that's milk chocolate. It's a lot of sugar. It's milk. It's not dark chocolate. <laughs> Very little chocolate in there. Yeah, that's exactly right, yeah. man. It's like, I'm, I'm listening to the Coffee Health and Science podcast and I've been crushing the Dunkin' Donuts coffee. I've been crushing the gas station coffee. Hey, do me a favor. Go ahead and tease, and then um, I have an offer to make. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Um, so, My Healthy Patient. This is Dr. Coffee's uh, membership program for physicians. It's, this is really, really good stuff, man. I'm really excited about this project. It's such a simple idea, providing doctors, patients with educational resources on better lifestyle choices and a wide array of of topics to take control of their health and uh, increase their wellness in their own lives, take their wellness into their own hands. I'm really happy about this, Doctor Steve. I'm glad that uh, I'm able to help you a little bit, advise you as you uh, you know build out this company. And uh, as he said, listeners, that's where a lot of his work is going towards. You know, the healthy eating book, book on inflammation coming up, really cool. So I'm sure we'll be talking about it and getting updates on my healthy patient as you uh, as you continue to make appearances on the Coffee Health and Science podcast. I'd love to do that, and I'll I'll tell you we've we've got my healthy patient as an educational program for doctors for their patients, twelve month programs of uh, different topics each month. Patients will get a ebook, a workbook, 
checklist, a podcast, a webinar, all on a topic, make them experts at the topic. We have the first three books done. The first one is My Healthy Eating, which is a general course in, in what to eat for health. And any of your listeners that give us their email address, give you, and request a copy of it, I would be glad to send a copy if everybody will proofread it for me. <laughs> sure thing. So how can they, what's the best way to get at you? If you're on Instagram, you can get at me at Jordan River IG and then email puritycoffeepodcast at gmail.com. Uh, Dr. Steve, do you want to throw one out or we'll just, we can stick with that. No, I'll go through you. I'll let you, okay, you, you do it. And then um, I'll, you give me the emails. I'll send them out to copies of the book and then everybody can benefit. So, also, listeners, this is dropping September 19th as you hear it, and I've gone ahead and gathered all the addresses for the Coffee Tree Grow Kit uh, that's going to be shipped out to you guys. So, as of today, actually, Dr. Coffee is going to be uh, beginning that process. Stay tuned for, uh, what, Dr. Coffee, a seed and a little uh, bag of soil to get started in, and uh, yes. put this thing by, by a window with some good light, and there you go. Yeah, um, there are instructions in each kit. Great. And you get a few seeds and you get some dirt and then you'll find a little glass container and you'll follow the instructions for putting it under a lamp and keeping it moist and we'll all grow coffee trees together. I am so excited. Uh, That is going down shortly. Stay tuned, everybody. Thank you for submitting your information and thank you for being loyal listeners to the Coffee Health and Science Podcast. Really, really great things going on with the show. We're growing, um, getting tons of good feedback, and I really do appreciate you guys. We've done something very special with this unique show. There's no other show like it. And thank you, Dr. Coffee, for always being such a great presence on this show. I love it. Thanks, Jordan. Everybody listening, that's all for today. I'll catch you next time. This is Dr. Coffee and Jordan River signing off, wishing you an extraordinary day. We'll see you next time on the Coffee Health and Science Podcast. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.